The F-35 is widely understood to be one of the most survivable fighters on the planet thanks to its stealth and advanced electronic warfare capabilities. But most people don't realize that the F-35 has another trick up its sleeve. A secret weapon to be used when enemy air defenses or even other fighters try to engage the F-35 with radar-guided missiles. Let's talk about the ALE-70 fiber optic decoy and what it really takes to shoot down an F-35. Last week, a Russian transport plane carrying 65 Ukrainian POWs was shot down. And as I record this, more than 178 news outlets have covered this story, including 43 left-leaning ones and 28 right-leaning ones. Right now, right-leaning outlets are emphasizing the accusation that it was a Ukrainian missile that brought that plane down, whereas left-leaning outlets are calling those accusations a conspiracy theory. So far, there's been no official word as to what actually did happen, but it's clear that the framing is already very different depending on political sphere. Ground news is an invaluable tool in my research toolbox. It's a news aggregator that gives you a daily feed of news articles from media outlets all around the world. But more than just making sure you're well informed, ground news goes further, highlighting political bias and media coverage to make sure that you see how different political framing can affect perceptions of the same story. For every article you find on ground news, you can find a list of how many left, right and center-leaning outlets covered that story. And then you can scroll through the headlines based on those categories to see how even headlining can change based on political bias. Ground News makes it easy to not just stay in the loop, but to stay aware of our own bias and the bias inherent to the media we consume. And right now, you can get 30% off the same Ground News Vantage plan I use for my research by going to ground.news slash sandbox with two X's or just following the link in the description below. Ground News is already a part of my morning routine and now it can be a part of yours too. Now, toad decoys have been around in one form or another since the mid-1990s. The first generation toad decoy, the ALE-50, was developed by Raytheon, and it served as a toad radar jammer that could transition into a juicy target for enemy air defense systems once they did launch a radar-guided surface-to-air missile. Before long, BAE systems came out with the second generation of toad decoys, the ALE-55, which uses a fiber optic cable to stay connected to the electronic warfare suite on board the aircraft to help tailor its jamming capabilities specifically to the threat at hand. And now, the F-35 employs what could be called a second and a half or maybe even a third generation of this toad decoy technology, the ALE-70. And while the majority of the specifics about the ALE-70's capability set remain classified, we know enough about its predecessor, the ALE-55, and the F-35's broad capability set as a whole to draw some pretty interesting conclusions about what the ALE-70 can do for the Joint Strike Fighter in combat. Tucked away beneath a sawtooth panel on the right-hand side of the F-35's underbelly, the ALE-70 towed decoy system provides three layers of protection against radar-guided weapons, including surface-to-air missiles and long-range air-to-air missiles launched by other fighters. Once deployed, these decoys, which are sometimes affectionately known as little buddies, start out working as a jammer, maintaining a fiber-optic connection to the F-35's advanced ANASQ-239 electronic warfare suite. Now that allows the F-35's advanced onboard sensors to not only identify the potential threat, but even the exact frequency that that radar array is broadcasting on. It then relays that data to the ALE-70 decoy, allowing it to tailor its jamming or spoofing signals to that precise radio frequency. This allows for extremely specialized jamming or spoofing. Now in this context, spoofing can mean a number of things, but broadly speaking, spoofing is the act of fooling a targeting radar array rather than jamming it. By using specialized signals tailored to the radio frequency that array expects to receive, an aircraft can fool that array into thinking that it's somewhere that it's not, or moving faster than it is, maybe flying at a higher or lower altitude, or just generally being a larger target than the aircraft actually represents. All of this can make it much more difficult to actually target the fighter, even if you know that it's there. 
Now that mode is known as suppression, but by now we all know that stealth is not invisibility, and the truth is, even with an active jammer or with spoofing signals being broadcast, it's not impossible for a surface-to-air missile system to get a lock on the F-35. So in the event that that does happen, the ALE-70 then transitions to the deflection mode. Now in this operational mode, the ALE-70 targets the missile's guidance system itself, sending, again, tailored radio frequency signals meant to confuse the missile about where the aircraft actually is, with the intent of sending it well off course so it has no hope of actually hitting the aircraft. But even if an air defense system somehow manages to pierce the F-35 stealth, and then manages to get past the jamming or spoofing signal, and then the missile itself somehow manages to shrug off this very specific electronic warfare attack on its guidance system, the ALE-70 then transitions to its third and final functional mode, known as seduction. Now, sort of like Bugs Bunny and Drag, the seduction mode is all about providing that missile with a very attractive target, a radar return that's much juicier than the F-35's very small radar cross-section. Now, the missile's guidance system is gonna go after the largest radar return in the vicinity that it's aimed at, and just before impact, an explosive cartridge on the fiber optic tow line separates that decoy even further from the F-35 to ensure that none of the explosion or shrapnel manages to hit the aircraft when the missile detonates for the decoy. Now, based on acquisition documents, we know that at least the F-35C and likely all three F-35 variants actually use these decoys rather than chaff as their primary countermeasure against radar-guided weapons. Now, flares and chaff are the traditional countermeasures we see fighters employ against inbound missiles. Flares produce a pronounced heat signature that distracts inbound infrared-guided or heat-seeking missiles, whereas chaff is basically a cloud of metal scraps that produces a large radar return that distracts an inbound radar-guided weapon. The F-35 carries flares, but not chaff leveraging the ALE-70 for this job instead. And to that end, these decoys can deploy very quickly, despite the fact that they're towed assets. And that's thanks to drag fins that pop out of the base of the decoy as it's launched to use the air resistance to propel it backwards as the aircraft flies forward. Now we know that in the older ALE-55 systems employed by fourth generation aircraft like the Navy's Super Hornets, that these decoys can be quickly retracted back to the aircraft if they're not expended in the missile defense effort. And while we can't say for certain that the F-35's ALE-70 can do the same, it seems pretty likely that they can. But even in the off chance that they can't, the F-35 reportedly flies with at least four of these decoys on board, in every sortie. And what this ultimately means is that every F-35 is protected by multiple consecutive layers of protection against inbound missiles, starting with effective mission planning based off of good intelligence to allow you to mitigate risks presented by advanced air defense systems, followed by the aircraft stealth design and radar absorbent skin. From there, the job gets turned over to what could really be described as a symphony of onboard avionics working in concert to protect the aircraft, starting with the incredibly powerful AN-APG-81 Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar, which is not only constantly scanning the battle space and identifying threats, but is so powerful that it can even be used to jam enemy radar arrays while simultaneously targeting other things in the air or on the ground. Now this system, along with the F-35's radar warning receiver that lets the pilot know if an enemy has locked onto them, are all connected to the Mission Data Files network that provides a constant stream of updated threat information about whatever asset you may be squaring off against. In other words, the F-35 can not only identify what type of system is targeting it, but it can provide the pilot with classified information about the capabilities of that threat system, including its targeting envelope, its potential range, and much more. More protection and data also comes from the ANAAQ-37 Electro-Optical Distributed Aperture System, which includes six infrared cameras mounted 
all around the aircraft's body to provide full spherical awareness of the battle space. Now that distributed aperture system can immediately identify the infrared spike or heat spike produced by a missile launch. And the second it identifies a launch, it provides that target data to the rest of the onboard systems, including the ANASQ-239 electronic warfare suite that has its own jamming and spoofing capabilities as well as that ALE-70 decoy we've been talking about. All of these systems coalesce to create layers of both digital and physical protection for the F-35 against inbound missile threats. And because every F-35 carries all of these systems and at least four decoys, what that really means is that not only is this aircraft exceedingly difficult to target, but on the off chance that some nation does have the means to penetrate all those layers of protection, the F-35 could still theoretically eat four missiles on any given sortie without breaking a sweat. Now these capabilities would obviously be helpful in any combat operation, but they could be especially valuable as F-35s absorb what has historically been called the Wild Weasel Mission. Now the Wild Weasel Mission is the suppression or destruction of enemy air defenses, and it's really the closest thing a modern fighter pilot can get to a Wild West shootout. The way the suppression of enemy air defense mission plays out is by flying multiple aircraft into contested airspace and waiting for those ground-based air defense systems to power up and target those aircraft. Once those radar arrays are online and broadcasting, those fighters will deploy anti-radiation missiles like the AGM-88 Harm or the more modern and advanced AARGMER for advanced anti-radiation missile extended range. Now these missiles hone in on those broadcasting radar waves, allowing them to take out those ground defenses. But in order to do that, you've got to get your missile fired before they manage to shoot you down. Now, the Air Force has used a number of aircraft for this mission, including F-4G Wild Weasels, and more recently, Have Glass 5 F-16s, which are F-16s coated in the same radar absorbent skin found on modern stealth fighters. But the F-35 promises to be the most potent wild weasel ever fielded, especially in conjunction with these longer-ranged anti-radiation missiles. And by using these towed decoys and maybe other systems like the ADM-160 mauled for miniature air-launched decoy, which is effectively a cruise missile that can broadcast fake radar returns for any aircraft that you want, F-35s can engage these surface-to-air missiles with significantly less risk to the airframe and the pilot than any Wild Weasel missions have ever allowed before. So, while the F-35 stealth is obviously a huge factor in this aircraft's survivability, you should know that it does not rely on stealth alone. And it doesn't matter who you are or what system you have, taking down an F-35 is a massive challenge.